So we're coming to you from Nowcast Essays Studios on the sixth floor of San Antonio Central Library. And today we have with us Carol Mendoza Fisher, who is a community taxi cab advocate. Carol, tell me how you come to this conversation. Well, uh, my father owns a small business, and um, he is 80 now, so he's owned this business since 1979. He was one of the first uh, minority um, who, minorities who were allowed to have a permit to own a cab. Oh, so he, yeah. is, he runs a cab company. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And, mm -hmm. and how many cabs are in his company? How many people? 11. There are 11 people and um, we have um, 16 drivers sometimes they take turns um, he has over the years he's had about 35 drivers and um, a lot of them are still with him and um, they're like family they're very um, hard-working people there's many immigrants um, but that's we've gotten to know a lot of them and and they're like many of them are younger than him so they're like his sons or like He's very paternal with them. He he loves them and he cares a lot about them. And uh, they're people from all all different ethnicities. Yes, Somalia, Vietnam, Mexico. We're Salvadoran, um, and so this was you know really a, a great place to kind of achieve a, a level of of um, economic security and be able to have college and. Uh, community college and and um, you know a lot of these folks um, supply m money back home and to their extended families here in San Antonio and and they pay taxes and they buy in the local economy so um, we really care for them as as an extended family and it and the business was was good enough that you and your siblings went to college yes um, actually I'm you know as of a year ago, the business was good. It was it was able to sustain um, our family, and um, my dad worked. You know, it's always a tough business, so he worked twelve to fourteen hour days. Um, up until a few years ago, then he had to the cab industry with the introduction of Uber. As of a year ago, he's back to working sixteen hour days, and he's eighty, so this is really hard on him and all of his drivers. Well, let's let's talk about uh, the entry of of uh, uh, the companies Uber and Lyft um, that some people refer to as rideshare. Um, as as I've pointed out on uh, Nowcast SA, that uh, the Associated Press style book, um, which uh, dictates how we how we the terms that we use to describe things, say it's not rideshare um, because they charge money. Um, so we're not permitted to use that in in news articles. We have to refer to it as a transportation network company. Um, you, you said something the other night about what you, what you consider rideshare. What's rideshare? I consider carpool rideshare. When I take my daughter and my neighbor kids to school every day and we share the burden of, of gas and, and we also build a relationship that way, that's true rideshare, carpooling. Uh, I don't consider paying someone to take me from point A to point B sharing. That implies it's free, and it's not free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this. Let's get back to this. Uh, in, in a story. In, it seems to me in San Antonio, that this is a story about small businesses. I mean, your dad runs a small business. Um, um, is there how many how many cab companies are there in San Antonio? There's 28 plus yellow cab. Mm -hmm. uh, the number of permits is capped, so there's 985 cabs. That's not a lot of cabs, but that was established through a rule process um, that allows the operating costs and the profits to be le legitimate and to be a living wage for all. And so when there's a glut, all of that is cut into, and this process was bought into by the city, by the stakeholders. It was a very um, genuine process. And so with the glut comes a cost to everyone. Uber has introduced a, a glut, so this creates an artificially um, bloated system that eats into all these operating costs, and they've 
they've taken us back 20 years by charging rates that the cabs were charging 20 years ago. Let's step back to 20 years ago, which is when the city put in um, a, a majority of the regulations that cover cab companies right now. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay, there will be um, just so many licenses. You have to have a you have to have a license, and there will be just so many licenses. And mm -hmm. those licenses are determined. I think they're in connection to the the population, right? Yes. So it's X mm -hmm. licenses per X thousand people in San Antonio. Correct. So it capped it so that there would not be so there would not be a glut on the market and so right. so the people who were in the cabs could actually um, make a living wage right right and right. there wouldn't be chaos um, right. either neither economic chaos mm -hmm. nor um, a disruption through you know people competing for fares mm -hmm. or or the customers getting caught in the middle mm -hmm. and this also included um, negotiations about public safety mm -hmm. where all the cab drivers agreed for public safety for their own safety because driving cab is one of the most dangerous um, jobs in America so for their own safety and for their their customer safety for the community safety they agreed to a, a lot of regulations right. and they agreed and they agreed that the, the the vehicles would go undergo safety checks they agreed to undergo yes. ten fingerprint background checks mm -hmm. and and uh, those kinds of regulations yes. were, were things that everybody agreed was a good idea for the whole industry. Correct, right? Right. right. And Uber is taking us back to the Wild West where there was no regulations and it caused a lot of chaos back then and it will cause a lot of chaos again. Well, one of the regulations um, uh, is also that, that um, on cabs is that they show that they serve the entire community. Right? right, and and that that regulation there is there is no public showing of whether Uber and Lyft serve the entire community. Let's talk about some parts of the community that Uber and Lyft can't serve: the cash economy. Right. So one in five um, residents in San Antonio are elderly, um, and they a lot of these people are are working poor. They're on fixed incomes, and and they don't have a smartphone or a credit card. And, and many of them are handicapped or disabled, um, they're, they're ill, and what the cab industry provides is, okay, you have once a week you have to go to the grocery store, we will come get you, we will take your groceries inside for you. Many of the drivers will not accept a tip from these customers. They will put away their groceries, they've developed a relationship with them, and they understand that sometimes, um, you know, you just have to use compassion and, and and, and and we see that displayed a lot. And and a lot of these elderly folks, they cannot walk six blocks in 105 degree weather to catch the via bus. They they cannot acquire a, a smartphone and an app. And they and they cannot acquire a credit card that easily, or if at all. And that's where the cab drivers are really important to the community because the cab drivers accept cash. Yes. And they take a phone call from a from a phone, even a landline, for the people that still have them. Yes. And um, and they will be there to pick them up and and, and bring them home. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I uh, you were talking about uh, folks who have particularly who have medical appointments. I mean, yes, this is a big area which is being neglected because um, you know cab drivers we take they take diversity training, they take sensitivity training, they take ADA training. To, to be able to say, okay, these are the ways I can help the community. And and so if there's a, a person who needs to go to the downtown Knicks, my, my dad has a longtime customer who he drives to the Knicks downtown. And she's an elderly lady, and so is he, but he calls her no la señora, you know, and he's very respectful of her. And he drives her down there, he picks her up, he drives her down there, he goes, he parks his car on his own dime, he takes her up six floors, he checks her in because her sight is not that good, and he waits for her. He goes and has coffee, he waits around for her, you know, two hours later, he will go upstairs, take the elevator, walk her back down, and take her home. And, you know, this is something that Uber drivers, they're very much in a hurry. They cannot, because they're app, they're, they're rated, they cannot do these things because it's prohibitive for them to receive ratings when they're waiting on another fare and these people rate them. And so cab drivers really serve this niche. And San Antonio has 25% poverty, so this niche is not going away. The poverty, the issues that we have with poverty are best served by the cab industry. Mm -hmm.
Well, let's talk about let's talk about fairs, okay? Um, this this was also something that that began in the in the '90s um, when the city of San Antonio said um, to cabs, "You are allowed to charge up to X amount per 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 mile, but you also are not allowed to charge less than this amount in that band, right?" Um, and that was to prov- for two different reasons, right? Mm-hmm. One was to prevent, say, a tourist getting into a cab at the airport mm-hmm. and being told halfway to downtown, oh, that'll be 75 bucks, right? That's right. <laughs> and That's so, right. so airport fees are regulated very carefully. But t- talk about why there was a, you can't charge less than this. Um, cabs have a lot of operating costs. So to maintain a cab that's been on the road for three years, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes a transmission c- can go out from one day to the next um, because they have a lot of mileage put on them and so the operating costs were taking in they were taken into consideration when these are put these um, rates were put in um, and so what uber does is they've taken us back 20 years to a rate that's not sustainable for their drivers they're exploiting their drivers by making them apply that rate they're trying to win the marketplace by destroying the rate system and the city is being complicit in allowing this um, and taking us all that to economic insecurity. Um, we have drivers who currently can't meet operating costs, so they're sleeping in their cabs or they're taking naps in their cabs where they nap for an hour and then they're back on. They're spending 24 hours a day in their cabs just to make the same that they were making a year ago. In fact, less because these, these rates are not sustainable and and they're being artificially kept low by Uber subsidizing where they're actually instituting predatory pricing through what they through what they do is they'll charge up to 10 times the normal fare sometimes in a, even in a situation of calamity so they're, they're not invested in the community if we were have to have if we had a flood today and all we had was Uber as as a uh, option transit option they could say we're going to institute surge pricing and people who don't have the money or if you just forget your credit card what if you lost your purse in the flood you're not going to get driven unless you have a personal relationship then that you would be relying on their compassion but the company is not invested in the community so well let's go back to the 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 bottom threshold so the bottom threshold Mm -hmm. is there to because of the operating costs and also to ensure that the driver can make a living wage Right. Yes. I mean, that was yes. a, that was a big part of it. Yes. So what you're saying is that if Uber is charging way under those rates, right. that it not only um, it, it makes it difficult for those drivers to pay their operating costs, but it mm-hmm. also makes it difficult for them to get a living wage. And by the same token, when they depress prices that much, and there all the those Uber cabs and Lyft cabs out in the marketplace, then it makes it very difficult for the folks who are charging legally what the city says you should charge correct, um, correct. Uh, to to make a living yes and the city has deregulated for uber and so all of these protections that were here for the for the consumer and for the drivers mm-hmm. um they're gone they're mm-hmm. gone and they've been destroyed even though the cabs still have to adhere to this right. old system wow. Wow. so so there is the implications of this for mm-hmm. for for cab drivers mm-hmm. um, and the implications of this for customers yes there's a there's a shared cost to the community that's not being spoken about that is hidden and right now of course with the introduction being fairly new to the marketplace and the negotiations of the contract being uh, talked about right now at city council uber's on its best behavior and so it's not going to introduce surge pricing while the negotiations but soon thereafter what in city after city their pattern is to introduce surge uh, what they call surge pricing it's a really a predatory pra- practice of gouging customers um, when they most need transit options and uh, it's a bad public policy mm-hmm. okay and right now um, although cabs are regulated on the bottom that they can charge and the top that they can charge the city is has not regulated and has not put in any attempt to regulate uh, how little Uber can charge, Uber and Lyft can charge, or how much they can charge, and and obviously they refer to it as surge pricing, um, 
there are some people who have compared that with price gouging, which in, in, yes. which um, is is not legal in other circumstances. Right. right? It, correct. It's it's like a um, a hardware store who would charge you for flood supplies for emergency supplies, who would you know uh, institute this policy of when there's a hurricane coming, let's go ahead and charge everybody. 10 times more for all of the supplies that they need to protect their families and, and their homes. And to be clear, that is absolutely against the law in Texas, so mm -hmm. to do anything mm -hmm. like that. So let's get back to, you said there are hearings right now um, going on. Um, uh, th we're up for a review process after a trial period of some some regulations on Uber and Lyft and some, uh, um, there have been some public hearings. Um, so somebody who's watching now, what can they do? What can they do right now? Mm -hmm. And and uh, the, as this hearing process is underway, but also what can they do in the future? Well, I would, I would say please to think very deeply and make thoughtful choices in choosing transportation option, options because whether or not the dialogue exposes all of the problematic areas in choosing transportation options, there's a high cost to be paid to sacrifice small business in San Antonio, um, people who are invested in the community, destroying their livelihoods, and destroying a lot of working class options for this city. Um, please choose thoughtfully because it doesn't just affect you, it's just for an, a really cheap ride. It has a lot of trickle down, very negative effects on our community. And we're local, we're here, we've been here serving the community, and we want to get better. We want to do better for the customer, but we also are, are, are suffering. And so we just ask that, please make responsible choices, inform yourself on, on all of the aspects of this um, new technology. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank I you. I really appreciate Thank your you. being here. Thank you. Okay.